Marcus and I'm Nicholas and today we're going to talk about split boarding and we tell you what we love about it and also what we hate about it. And why we think that the um, uh, hard boot setup for split boarding is the most powerful tool and the most stylish. So everything uh, we speak about are our own personal experiences and if you're interested in more details uh, of the products and the technology we show you, um, check out our website. Some of you might know this book, Helvetic Backcountry, the classic from 2006. But most people will know this book, our last book, the Ski and Snowboard Touring Atlas for Switzerland. And between these two books, in about 10 years, splitboard touring and snowboard touring has changed a lot. So we get a lot of questions. What do you guys ride? What equipment do you use? And what we want to show you here is not this is the best split board setup you should get. We will show you different systems and the advantages and disadvantages. And in the end, you will have enough information to decide what system is best for you. I remember 2005. On snowshoes we were taking pictures for the first book and it was so hard to break in tracks. Marcus had to dig trenches through the powder and I was carrying my whole photo stuff and the board on my back. And I tell you, I was glad not to be first. Yes, it was really tough breaking trail on snowshoes. But in 2008, for a trip to Bulgaria and Italy, we organized some split boards from Burton. And even though split boards have been around since the 90s, that was really the first time that we tried them out. And on that trip in Italy, after we reached one summit after another and we had to do all the tracks by ourselves, we realized that this would never have happened on snowshoes and we were stoked about finding this technology and, and, and the way to do it. <laughs> so a little later, almost all of our crew were on split boards and we were using the classic Voile setup, which is a regular snowboard binding with a metal plate underneath the Voile plate that is fixed with a bolt for the uphill mode and slid onto the pucks for the downhill mode. But only in spring we felt that this setup wouldn't give us enough edge hold on steep slopes with hard snow. So we would always go back to snowshoeing in the spring. So the next step we took was to change from this snowboard binding with a voile plate to a specific split board binding which is all in one piece and it has two advantages first when riding down you're much closer to the board when you compare it to the binding and the plate and secondly for the uphill mode because of the stiff design of the binding it really allows you to put much better force on the edge of your board but still, as uh, the power of the edge is improved, it's the weakest point of split boarding. The lack of power on your edge on hard snow. So you're in a soft boot, you have a, a soft material. And um, if you try to get your edge in, sometimes uh, it's impossible and you, you slip off. So that can be pretty risky. So what you do is you put your ski crampons on much earlier than a skier would. And this is not only inconvenient, um, but also kills the flow of the walking. When we were doing research in the Arledge region, where you have a lot of glaciers and a lot of alpine terrain, we were traversing a moderately steep slope with the four of us on a rope. And all of a sudden, I get pulled off my feet. And when I look back, I see Nicholas hanging in the rope, lying on the ground not very happy with his split board binding. No, I tell you, it wasn't funny at all. I tried to follow Marcus, and, but I couldn't get any hold on my edge because it was such a hard snow and I tried and tried and suddenly I, I slipped off and I, I was hanging in the rope. And, and that's when I realized that it, it's not only dangerous for me, but also dangerous for the whole group. And um, that's when I started thinking about maybe I have to uh, find another gear. But let's be fair, this soft boot setup works fine on most days. When you have fresh powder and soft snow, it's a lot of fun and it works perfectly fine. But if you are in exposed terrain on steep and icy slopes, then your ankles start hurting pretty fast. 
Yes, and that's why I start doing some research. And I, I found out that in the U.S. there's a big community of splitboarders riding on a hard boot setup. So I thought, yes, put away the soft um, setup and let's try what they do. So that's a, um, a Dynafit um, Alpine skiing touring binding and a hard boot. And it sounded to me all the advantages that I was looking for should be um, available with that setup. So I bought all the parts and was ready to test it. To be honest, I was very skeptical first because one of the reasons why I quit ski touring and started snowboard touring was that I didn't have to use these terrible ski boots anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, everybody was laughing at me, but after the first ascent, I can swear it was, it was such another feeling. It was so uh, comfortable because with that boot you have such a great flexibility to walk in because it's made for. But sidewise, in the lateral direction, it's pretty stiff. So you have all the advantages you're looking for. Riding down was a, a bit of a new experience, but um, with, with all the advantages you have to going uphill, I would never change back to soft boots. Really? You would never go back to soft boots? Well, maybe, yeah. If it's one meter pile for sure up to the summit, I'll go on soft shoes. Well, so this is what I saw, and I saw Nicholas doing all these tours in his hard boot setup, and it looked pretty good. So I thought I'll give it a try as well. And did you miss the ladder finally? Um, no, not really. Um, so I've been using this setup for two years now as well. And um, I must say the biggest difference is that this doesn't feel like a ski, ski boot that you would think of. Really, it's a very comfortable shoe, almost like a sneaker in a yogurt cup. So after laying out where we come from and how we reach the point where we are at we're going to speak about the more technical um, details of the different setups. We're going to tell you what are the advantages and disadvantages. So first of all though, price. A split board is expensive and what you're looking at is a range of 1000 US dollars or Swiss francs up to 2000 dollars for a whole setup with a board, bindings and skins. So it is a substantial investment but once you've made the switch from snowshoes you won't regret it. I mean, what you could do is what we um, showed you before is you take your old snowboard binding and you attach it to a boiler plate and go with that. But we do, do not recommend it because with the new splitboard bindings available you have such a better um, ride feeling and also more power on the edge. So looking at specific splitboard bindings, what they all have in common is that they have a pretty solid base plate and are quite stiff. But they feel, when for the riding part, they feel like a normal snowboard binding. Now what we want to show you is the two most common systems to attach the binding to your board. First of all, the spark that slides onto the boiler pucks like this and locks in the front. And second is the Karakoram binding, which has a base plate where moving bolts keep it in place. And this binding is set on the front, uh, set on the board from the top and locked in place. Both of these systems you can use with uh, ski crampons and you can lock them at the heel for small skiing descents. Um, both of these systems though, they both have their pros and cons. So for example, the spark has some issues with the ski crampon and the Karakoram, as it has so many moving parts, can get a bit finicky when some of these parts ice up and then it's not so easy to attach the, the binding to the board. Um, and last but not least, price. The spark is uh, much cheaper than the Karakoram. There are also other systems like uh, new um, developed systems by Felkel or K2 or Splitstick or SP. But because these systems are pretty new, um, we don't have any experience with that and it's also a bit risky to buy new uh, to new technology. So um, these two ones are the ones we can um, uh, fully rely on and we recommend. And when it comes to a boot to use with it, um, first of all, you would want to look for the stiffest boot that you feel comfortable riding. But what we use is the Deluxe Spark XV 
It's a boot made specifically for, for split boarding and has some nice features of a mountaineering boot. So it has a very good sole. Uh, it has a lip in the back where you can easily fix a cramp on to. And it has a thermoformable liner um, with a Simpatex membrane. So looking at the soft boot setup, what we would recommend is the Spark XV Deluxe boot with the Spark binding. That's a very nice setup. Now please put away this soft um, stuff. I want to show you some real hard gear. So we come to the hard board setup. To the hard boot setup for the for the harder ones. So what you basically need for a hard boot setup is first of all your Dynafit um, toe pieces. This is a pretty old binding, but um, it still works pretty good. Um, and the adapter plate to attach it to your board. So you have this um, two toe pieces. And um, for this end, there are actually three different systems. The one is very basic. It's the Voile mountain plate. So you know this plate from uh, older systems with the soft uh, boot. And the new, brand new Dino um, Spark Dino binding that also slides over the pox. Yeah, this way, thank you very much. <laughs> they work pretty well, but the best of all systems, the most sophisticated, is the Phantom Splitboard Hardwood Binding. Yeah, and this is a binding I came across when I was researching for a Splitboard Binding made specifically for a hard boot. And these are made by uh, John Keffler in uh, Denver, Colorado. And he is a spacecraft engineer and came up with this system. And there are three important advantages to it. First of all, it's very light. Second, it's very low, it has a very low pro profile, so you're very low on the board. But most of all, it's locked into place by these two bolts. So it gives it the flexibility in the lateral direction that compensates for the stiffness of the ski boot. And when we come to a ski boot, most of the splitboarders ride the Dynavit TLT6 because it feels like a stiff, soft boot and it stays like this. So after three years you still have a, a really hard um, boot, you can do powerful turns and powerful ascent. Secondly, you can easily attach um, crampons, you see, mm -hmm. like on a, a mountaineer uh, boot. And third of all, um, it's a very light boot, so compared to soft boot, it's, it's incredible light. And four, if you don't believe it, check out the pictures of people going over rails and dropping to half pipes and Marco shredding um, big mountain lines uh, with that boot. It really works. Another advantage of this boot is that if you feel it's too stiff, you can easily modify some parts of it. For example, you can cut some of this plastic off, you can extend this hole in the back so it gives you more forward flex. And what's also worth mentioning is that this boot is quite tight for wide feet. It has a thermoformable liner that gives you some space and you can also get the plastic extended at the store. But there are also other boots out there which are comparable in terms of weight and stiffness. So check out other boots as well if you feel they might fit your, your feet better. So the last point is about style. We know exactly what you think. Hard boots have no style. These boots have been made for competitive ski tours in tights. And yes, you're right. But actually we are at the very intense um, research effort about how to bring back the style of a soft boot to a plastic boot. So our marketing department has been in a huge research effort to bring back the style of the leather, the wildness of the leather, back to the plastic boot. And we found out that it's not only the color, but it's also the haptical criteria that define the style of a boot. So we've been experimenting with different materials and different haptical experiences to adapt what you have with this boot and bring it to this boot. And now what we've come up with 
And this might be the solution to all your problems. If you are the lonesome cowboy kind of guy, you know, who rides into the sunset with a Marlboro in the angle of his mouth, who just feels this is the wild style, this is the wild west, you can get these kits from Helvetic Backcountry. You can adjust it to your boot and you will be riding in style again. So whatever your style is, we uh, can... You can be sure that with split boards you have um, a lot of a lot of fun in the mountains, and um, we hope you liked uh, our video and we could give you some uh, useful information. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.